Our first guest is Secretary of State Mac Warner, candidate for governor in the state of West Virginia. Mac, good morning to you. Good morning. Always good to be with you all. Yeah, where are, where are you this morning? I'm in Morgantown today, and I'm watching a beautiful sunrise. It's uh, absolutely gorgeous. Here. Are are the is the color as fantastic there as what it is in the Eastern Panhandle? It, it, it is. It's just spectacular, and we've got some burning bushes around our house, and they're just bright red. It is spectacular. Mac, you, you sounded great when you called, but right now you sound kind of muffled. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, let me try something different. That's very quiet. That is. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do sound different now, Mac. <laughs> very different. How about this? Is this okay? Yeah, that sounds better, actually. A little, little cleaner. Okay, good. Yeah. Right. Uh, you, uh, you recently uncovered a case of election fraud. What can you tell us about this? Well, I'm very pleased about this because uh, the legislature recently changed um, the law on uh, election fraud, making it much more serious. We've moved it from misdemeanor to, to felony, and we have our first conviction for that, and the judge has given a, uh, a strict uh, sentence, it's a year and a $1,000 penalty. And uh, we're, we're just really pleased to see that because our investigators, at first, I, I would say very little um, – accusations actually get reported to us and those that we do once we do the research and do the investigations um, very few of those actually get to prosecutors and even though those the prosecutors sometimes don't prosecute so there's a lot of effort that's put into these and when we finally get a, a conviction we want to see a sentence that's uh, worthy of all that effort and as a uh, deterrent to others to, to not w mess with our elections so uh, this fella had uh, been in prison for very serious uh, offenses, got out on parole, and then voted improperly while he was on parole. The clerks caught it, didn't count the vote, uh, sent him a letter telling him why, that he was still on parole, he wasn't eligible to vote. And then he went and registered uh, to, to vote uh, improperly while he was still on parole. So, I mean, this was two efforts to deliberately um, you know, affect uh, the outcome of, a, of an election by improperly voting. And so, uh, that's why we investigated. All that proved to be true, and uh, he went to court, was indicted this last summer, and has now been convicted, and the judge has issued a sentence. So the, the message here is that we do take election fraud uh, very seriously. We will spend the resources to uh, investigate when we uh, have the evidence and we have the prosecutors who will prosecute. Uh, we, we will deliver stiff sentences. And so this all happened in Fayette County, and uh, – but we want to get the message out statewide that we do have investigators all around the state, and we do take it seriously. Yeah, I, I suppose I could have framed that better. I don't, I don't really think that's election fraud so much as it is one particular voter voter voting illegally. Is there evidence of any more than than one in Fayette County? We have other cases that uh, we have investigated and uh, are under investigation. So, uh, well. I, as, as you all saw out there in the Harper's Ferry case, where four votes determined the outcome of a city council election that had major ramifications for economic development, it doesn't take a lot of fraud. It doesn't take a lot of votes to, to change the outcome of some of these elections. We had 12 elections in 2022 that were decided by five votes or less throughout the state. So that's why we have to get after every one of these cases um, and, and make sure that people know uh, we, we don't tolerate this here in West Virginia. The, that is the rule indeed for voting. Uh, can you tell us what's the rule for holding office in regards to a criminal record? Uh, the question has been asked, can you actually be in prison and run for office and, and win and serve? Or what, what are the, what's the truth in this matter? It, it depends on what the charge is. There, there are certain charges that are going to keep you from uh, participating. So the, the key to this is someone who serves their sentence and gets through the parole then properly gets back registered and properly uh, runs for office and so forth. That's that's the key here is uh, if you've done your time and you've paid your debt to society, then, yes, we want you to be a full-fledged member of society again and participate. But there are certain crimes you can imagine, the ch child molestations and murder and those sorts of things that uh, are, are so heinous that uh, then you shouldn't be permitted to, to participate again. Billy. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Mac. A couple of questions here. Uh, is there a distinction between a felony and a misdemeanor in terms of either voting or holding office? 
I would before I just take a shot at it, what I'd like to do is get my general counsel, D. Kersey, to respond to that. He's the one who's on top of all the nuances of election law. So uh, we'll get back to you with a specific answer on that. Okay. Uh, kind of a follow-up to that, uh, going back to the individual that you, uh, you've you indicted and has been convicted. Uh, in his case, it was a felony. Uh, I guess my question was, if he had had a misdemeanor charge rather than a felony, uh, then it would, uh, uh, then he could not have I don't know whether he could have voted or not. But this kind of leads into another situation. And if I'm wrong on this, please correct me. It's my understanding that for holding for office, uh, you can, uh, in statewide office, uh, being a convicted felon does not make any difference. Uh, on local office, it does make a difference. To me, that is uh, uh is an imbalance, but I yet I've been told that is a case. Again, this may be encroaching on an area you're not familiar with. Don't know. Uh, you, you're correct. I'm okay. not uh, up on that specifically. Okay. Uh, specifically, depending on what the local laws might be. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. The interesting thing in this case was that actually, when he voted illegally, it was only a misdemeanor. That's what I'm saying. Was the law was recently changed? Yeah. So it was when he registered to vote, and he that. Ill, when he illegally registered to vote, that was the felony. So it was kind of backwards from what you would think. But uh, the the point is that the law did change, and that's why why we're talking about it is to let everybody know that the law has changed. There is much more serious ramifications now if you do anything improperly in the election arena. Uh, we just uh, want everybody to be aware of that. Well, you have you spent a lot of time ensuring that elections are conducted properly. Uh, the fact that this is kind of an anomaly sticks out by itself uh, is a testament to the success that you've had. Well, thank you. And as I said, there are other investigations that are underway. And uh, the, the key here is to go along with what you were just saying. We've done this see something, text something. That's allowing every person with a iPhone or a smartphone to uh, be a part of our uh, outreach, basically. And if you see something going improperly, text it to us. Send us a picture or send us a text. And and we have these investigators. We now have 10 investigators all around the state, so we can get to any precinct pretty much within an hour or so, depending on the serious nature of the uh, assertion or the allegation. And we can stop it. You know, if somebody's uh, say coercing votes, twisting arms, buying votes, uh, improperly campaigning. Uh, the the idea is to get there quickly to stop it and to gather evidence right as it happens, rather than a, something coming into us a week or two later when the trail is run cold. So uh, there's this one: the outreach to the everyday citizen to be a part of our basically investigation or reporting, um, uh, you know, complex or whatever. Then we have the investigators to investigate. And now we've got the legislature behind us with uh, increasing the penalties. So all of this should go together to send the message to the people that we're running free and fair elections and don't mess with it. Uh, West Virginia, as we all know, used to be pretty much the laughing stock in the nation about voting early, vote often, and all the voting from the graveyard and so forth. Uh, that's now ancient history in West Virginia. That's uh, we've, we've gone past that. We've cleaned up the voter rolls. We don't have those 400,000 opportunities for fraud that we used to have with the the voting rolls being bloated. So we're ready for a 2024 election, free and fair. We've been getting results on election night. People like that. It increases their confidence in the elections. So we're firing on all cylinders, and we're catching national attention as a state that's doing it right, and we're being pointed to by other states saying, if West Virginia can do it, why can't we do it? Mac, this is John Gilstrap. Good morning. Good morning. When we think about felonies we think of of the big ones right we got we got murder rape arson kidnapping those sort of things and even apparently within our own recent history in west virginia the the voter fraud if such as this was a misdemeanor now it's a felony so two questions actually is that fairly unique to west virginia to treat this as a felony and the second question is what uh what drove the change to make it in West Virginia from a misdemeanor to a felony? I think it's a, a change in the legislature. Uh, we've got a more conservative legislature now that I think is really representative of the people. We've always been a conservative people. And now because of the election um, 
the concern, the, the split in this nation, these, these decisions all the way from local all the way up to the president are being decided by such slim margins. And pe- the lack of confidence in the elections, people are still arguing about the 2020 election. And this really began in 2016 when you had Hillary Clinton, who didn't believe the outcome of the election, and then Stacey Abrams not believing the outcome of the election, and then Donald Trump not believing the outcome. This is on both sides. And so uh, the voting, the elections are at the very heart of our democracy. That's why we can't tolerate even a single vote being improperly cast. So uh, I think that's that's why you've seen this change by the legislature to take this more seriously and uh, reflect that in the penalties. And that's why it moved from misdemeanors to felonies. And um, I think and, and that's why I'm so glad you're talking about this and to let people know that things have changed in West Virginia, and uh, we're going to continue to be a leader nationwide in election integrity and security. I would take a hard turn here, I think. When when it comes to, you know, election integrity depends on uh, accurate input during the election so that, that voters can hear from their candidates and hear accurately from their candidates. And we're hearing a lot now about um, artificial intelligence and deep fake technology. Are we either as, as a nation, as far as you know, or as a state, are we looking into laws that will prohibit um, making people say things that they never said, you know, using computer technology to undermine the elections? The, the legislature is looking at that sort of thing, and it goes broader than that. Uh, I know Daniel Linville, uh, delegate, uh, is uh, in charge, basically, of, or is the, heads the committee, uh, that looks into these sorts of things. I, in fact, I just met with him last week. And we're also looking at things like uh, the social media and the online platforms and how they have skewed uh, their coverage. And the best example of that was when t- Twitter took President Trump off uh, offline, deplatformed him. Uh, that shut down a voice. And that was at the same time that COVID was going on. So it's just not politics, but it's health care. And some people said you had to get the shot. Other people said you didn't need to. You had to wear a face mask. You didn't, that sort of thing. I think in this democracy of ours, all the voices need to be heard, and it shouldn't be up to a platform. It has basically become like a utility, um, and a utility company shouldn't be able to turn off your, your power because they don't agree with your politics, or a phone company shouldn't be able to cut off your phone service because they don't like – they're listening in and hearing what you're saying about a particular candidate or, or issue. And then shut off your service. And I think that's what we've got with Google and Facebook and Twitter and these sorts of uh, online platforms. And that's why I have personally written a letter to each of their CEOs to say, in West Virginia, uh, we're going to hold you to campaign finance laws if you start favoring one side versus another. We've put them on notice. Again, West Virginia taking the lead in this. And I think that because Congress has been looking at this, both the Republicans and the Democrats don't like what social media is doing. But they don't like it for different reasons, and that's why they haven't come out with legislation uh, to, to address this. Well, in my specific arena as the chief elections officer, I want fair elections in West Virginia, and I don't want these platforms deplatforming one candidate or one campaign uh, versus another. And uh, what, what has happened, there was actually evidence um, in a case where at the end of each month when people were asking for money, they, one of the uh, platforms would send the emails or the requests for money to people's spam rather than to their inbox. And so a whole lot uh, of the mail was not getting open because it was in people's spam. But th- at the beginning of the month, then it would go back up. Well, as soon as this was brought to their attention that somebody was watching them, then all of that stopped. And so you can just imagine in a campaign when they're taking one party's line uh, or messages offline um, or promoting another. So it, it goes both ways. Um, that amounts to a campaign contribution. They're favoring one side versus another. You can monetize it. You can say this is what we would have paid to put out, get out the vote effort or to vote for a certain candidate. So it, we're, we're trying our best from the state level to make this happen, and I hope it catches on nationwide. And The, the, the idea is simply to get them to stop putting their thumb on the scale of our elections. Yeah, we're really talking about two different things here, though. Um, you know, editorial choice, is, there's all kinds of ways to censor, right? And one of them is simply to pay more, <clears throat> excuse me, pay more attention to one side than the other. Newspapers have been doing this for generations. The My concern, and that's, that's selective 
uh, reporting. And it, it can be good or bad. That's, that's just a different thing. My concern is about the deliberate deceptions of people manufacturing videos and audio of uh, very convincing of candidates saying things and doing things that they just didn't do. And then that getting shared on social media across across the board. Are you aware of of legislation and efforts to keep that from happening? Because I find that terrifying. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I am aware of them looking at it. I have not heard any good solutions as to. And if you have any, please let us know. Uh, again, again, I would refer you to Daniel Blenville. He's heading this up in the West Virginia State Legislature. Uh, so you've identified a very good point uh, that, that is very contentious. Uh, the issue is what is the remedy? What is, what is our solution as to how to, to address that? And Matt, I don't know that anyone come up with a good idea yet on that. Mac, circling back to the, one of the first questions about uh, when you lose your right to vote. Uh, Matt Harvey uh, has uh, just posted that you lose your right to vote. Do not. You do not. Uh, I was going to say for felony, you lose your right to vote. For misdemeanor, you do not lose your right to vote. That sounds correct. Okay. Mac, one now, Go ahead, you, Mac. Even with a felony, once you've served your time and your parole, you can re-register. Exactly, um, yeah. Again, depending on what the felony was. Yeah, there's a lot of comments on our Facebook page about why you can't vote while you're on parole. Uh, and the, the law is the law. That's as simple as I can put it on that one. Uh, Mac, let's talk about the race for governor. Uh, recently, there was an endorsement given by the former President Trump for Jim Justice. And uh, a lot of people think that helps in West Virginia tremendously. Your thoughts on hearing that news with that endorsement? Well, both good and bad or whatever. Uh, I know that uh, Governor Justice is personal friends with the president, uh, but I also know that uh, Congressman Mooney has voted very consistently with uh, President Trump. So um, it was an interesting uh, development, uh, but uh, I, I can't say it surprised me simply because of the personal friendship between the two. And uh, in regards to your race for uh... – for governor, that's certainly uh, a, a situation where your numbers have been coming up over the last month or two. They have been, and it's just a matter of getting the uh, message out and letting people get to know me. I have been Secretary of State, but uh, that doesn't cover quite the – or get the coverage or the interest level that governor does. And so I am reintroducing myself to the people of West Virginia, and I've got uh, a lot of positive things to show with regards to my bona fides with um, – being from West Virginia, uh, all the things that I've done from Eagle Scout to West Point, the Honor Committee to Army Service uh, to this uh, to the State Department, working overseas in Afghanistan, and now as Secretary of State, I've, I've got all these qualifications that will uh, help me tremendously as governor, and uh, those distinctions can be drawn against some of the other candidates. I also have a, a tremendous, wonderful wife. Who will make a wonderful first lady and a wonderful uh, family. So I think we'll just be a wonderful representative uh, for the state of West Virginia. And uh, I'm anxious to get that story out to everybody and um, draw those distinctions. I'm anxious to debate. And we're seeing one of the candidates uh, who thinks he's in the lead uh, or free, refusing to debate or stepping away from it. And so uh, you have to ask yourself why. And uh, I'm anxious to get into a debate situation and uh, let the people hear from the candidates themselves and make their decision. Do you think most people in West Virginia are aware of your resume, Mac? Because when you look at your resume, it's hard to not be impressed and think that that's the kind of a resume you would want a governor to have. Exactly. And that's why it's simply a matter of getting the money and getting the advertising and getting the messages out. And that's why the debates are, are so important. I think that's why the one candidate is – uh, refusing to debate or staying away from it, and um, th there's also the concern as to you know what, why does he not want to participate? And we're we're getting back to the Trump issue. He is supported by the Club for Growth, which is an anti-Trump uh, organization, and um, so it's it's uh, disingenuous, I think, to to take their money and yet then try to claim that you're a Trump supporter. There, so those are the sort of discrepancies that need to be. Uh, brought to the voters' attention, and this is a Republican primary. This is to the Republican Party that uh, is uh, very tuned in uh, to President Trump, and some people like him, some people don't. But uh, here in West Virginia, I think the majority of people 
uh, do like President Trump and like what he did, especially when you compare it against President Biden and uh, the inflation and everything else that we're dealing with and the troubles. This this stuff that's going on in the Middle East, I think, is a direct result of the weakness that we showed as we pulled out of Afghanistan. So um, it's more than just economics. It's international uh, politics that play here. What's going on with Iran and sending money to Iran? There's just silly stuff, crazy stuff. And um, that, that's why I think the people of West Virginia who traditionally have given more as far as their blood, sweat, and tears, their manpower uh, to the service of this country um, kind of reject – or not kind of. They, they fiercely reject what's going on with the Biden and his policies and fiercely support uh, President Trump and a stronger – national defense. Uh, Mac, can you make a distinction between why uh, uh, Marcy does not, uh, why you're condemning Marcy for not entering the debate, and yet President Trump did not enter the debate either? Well, two different things. President Trump is so far out in the front, he doesn't need to. But uh, in, in this situation, the, the polls that have been released have been uh, push polls or fake polls or paid for polls it, without the release of the cross tabs to tell you what questions we're asking, how they're asking, the demographics of who they ask, you know, were independents included or Democrats, you know, all those sorts of factors uh, affect the outcome of a poll. And so when somebody pays for it, then yes, you can expect them to get the results they're looking for. So I don't think that there's been a really good poll done. Uh, even Metro News tried to claim that they had done one, and then they had to go back and retract after um, th- the fact that it was um, that they had to change the numbers. And it was a very small, like 300 and some people were were asked, rather than you know, several thousand, which is probably what you need to do to get an accurate polling. Uh, so each one of those polls, I think, we can uh, pull apart uh, individually. Let's get a real. Good, the, the only poll that counts is the one on election day. And uh, we've seen that time and again. Uh, the, the same person that did the Metro News poll was the, the person that said that uh, Natalie Ten- Tennant was tied with uh, Shelly Moore Capito back in 2014, and it was an absolute blowout. Um, so I, I don't put weight in these polls uh, at the moment. Uh, we need to do what we're doing right here, and that's talking to the people of West Virginia, have the debates, let the uh, moderator uh, probe each one of us. And what are the motivations behind? Why would you take money from a anti-Trump uh, group, but then claim that you're, you know, your best buddies with Trump? Or those kinds of things. So we need to expose that, and then I think the voters will have the uh, perspective to cast a, an intelligent vote. When is the uh, debate scheduled, Mac? Uh, there's one scheduled for December 7th. Metro News or Hoppy Kirchhoff is hosting that uh, in Morgantown, and uh, three of the candidates. Uh, have agreed that uh, Morrissey has not agreed to that. In fact, Morrissey sent a letter that's asking people to not participate in that and to participate in the three that he wants to. So, again, it's trying to do both sides, trying to act like you want to debate, but in reality avoiding the debate until so late in the campaign that it's not uh, it's not germane. He, he's trying to just make it – this is a fait complete that he's going to be the governor and that sort of thing, and I don't think the people in West Virginia buy that. Mac Warner, the final word is yours as we are just about out of time. Well, I simply appreciate you all uh, having me on both to talk about election uh, integrity and uh, the gubernatorial campaign. I'm excited to uh, continue to spread this message and uh, the bio and what uh, I can bring to the state, what I intend to do for the state. I intend to be the education governor. That's the bottom line. So I intend to be the education governor. We've got to get respect back in the classrooms for these teachers. We've got to get them paid properly. Um uh, and then have that golden triangle between teachers, parents, and students with the focus on the students. And when we do that, we're going to solve a lot of the other ills that uh, are affecting West Virginia. Mac, thanks so much. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you all. Secretary of State Mac Warner.